this is going to be probably one of the biggest hikes that I have done in a long time. I'm super excited and to be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous. This thing is about 2,500 feet of elevation. It's not a super long hike, but it's just a super steep hike and it continues to go up. There's some challenges and obstacles on the way that we're going to have to navigate. So, <laughs> we got to go down here through Fritz's place. I'm walking from our camp spot, which this place is beautiful. We have a little view of the city and an ocean view. But I have to go down the steps across town to find the trail and then walk up the road to the trailhead and then eventually the trail. So I think we're about three miles up and three miles down. So six miles with 2,500 foot of elevation gain and some major obstacles along the way. Let's get going. We got about an 8 a.m. start. The birds are tweeting and the monkeys are out running around. <laughs> I just walked by Fritz and some of his friends, they were here and he kind of knew I was going up to Pera de, Gra de Gave and that's where the name of the hike is, Pera de Gava Gave. It's a very signature uh, mountaintop here, rarely hiked. Well, a lot of people will be on the trail, but anyway, they wished me luck. Kind of had some good chuckles. So, I'm headed down the stairs. Let's go, guys. So up over the houses, that's kind of where I'm going. You can see the palm trees kind of align the mountain ridge. But, <laughs> woo! -hoo. All right, this little walk through town, I'm afraid, is the last little flat spot I'm going to be able to appreciate for a while to come. I see a, a big roundabout up here, which is where I'm going to turn right and begin my ascent. Pedro Gavea. That's where we're going, boys and girls. That's where we're going. You probably can't see it, <laughs> but up there is a little monkey. We are walking up the road to the trail, and you can see there's a powder blue cumbie right here. But <laughs> as I said, this trail is going to be up the whole entire way, and I can already tell you. I am feeling the weight. All right. We are approaching the trailhead right here. I think there's already some other people up here who are going to be making the hike up. About 240 foot of elevation. Now I know I've already come up about 150 foot, but I just wanted to put this on the screen for you guys to prove to you that I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying this trail is going to go straight up. All right, it looks like we have a couple attractions along the way. It looks like we have a nice waterfall and a cave and then a climb. Woo! All right, so there is a climb here, as I told you. Pedro de Gabe is an easy fifth class section and it's very exposed and has seen many accidents, including deaths. It demands experience, well as proper equipment. You can hire a professional. Do not climb when raining. The round trip's gonna take longer than expected. You're responsible for your safety. So, there's the rules. And here we go. All right, just a quick little first impression here. A lot of boulders. <laughs> so far, the trail is a cobblestone path. It looks like the trail markers are yellow arrows and we're in the Atlantic forest and clearly there's a lot of jackfruit trees and that's what these are. I don't really like jackfruit. Some people probably do, but in any event, there's a lot of oaks supposedly sparsely populated and we have uh, seen around here a lot of monkeys. <laughs> We saw a porcupine, and so we'll probably see some of that stuff. I did not bring my big camera because 
well this is a hard hike and I needed to shunt shut some weight so anyway whew, we appear to be following this river up on this cobblestone path you can kind of see through the trees a little trickle of water coming down but I always like the sound of the cascading water and also I always love seeing the sprawling roots of the jungle forest and look at these things guys they just reach out and grab hold of the earth and sometimes when you get up into trails like this those can make some really hazardous obstacles obstacles for the trail but so far this is all hand placed cobblestone and so a really nice condition of the trail hopefully it doesn't change all right the trail just took a change you can see Cachera, that's where the waterfall is. I believe that's what waterfall means. So we're gonna go down around this trail and I don't think we have our beautiful cobblestone pathway anymore. So I can tell you as I'm about 45 minutes in that every step is up and it's steep but it's a really cool trail and uh, the forest is open a little bit so we can look into it we can hear the cool sounds and uh, we're in good shape so far guys but make no bones about it every step is up a lot of jackfruit trees up here and you can see them dangling off the tree. But also, I don't know if I told you, but this is a giant monolith. And when you're looking at them from afar, they kind of look like they have a smooth surface. And so this is really kind of the first time <laughs> we've any, seen anything that looked even slightly smooth in this jaggedy trail. But, there hasn't been a ton of diversity on this trail to be honest it's mostly been up and uh, uh, the forest hall looks kind of similar with jackfruit trees and toucans screaming in the background but it looks like as I get up to this monolith it might be starting to get a little more let's say interesting All right, all right, I met these guys on the trail. They said I have about an hour to go. Where are you guys from? Rio, from here. From here. What are your names? Matthews, Douglas, and Caio. Nice to meet you guys, man. Have a great day. <laughs> Cheers, guys. See you, man. See you. All right. Just met some cool guys on the trail, which I hadn't seen anybody for a while, so that was cool. They are coming back down. They said I have about an hour to go, maybe a little bit more. Uh, there's a part on the top that's really challenging, supposedly, where you need ropes and harnesses. So they gave me a little advice on that. And again, people in Brazil are just so cool. But <laughs> what do we gotta do on this hike? is put one foot in front of the other and keep going up that seems to be the trend so let's keep climbing
tonight that might be the last time I comment on a lack of diversity on this trail in this forest. We've been mostly under the tree canopy just climbing up and all of a sudden I turn the corner and there is a steep rock staircase that winds around and at the top I was rewarded with well a wooden plank bridge that sort of skirts along this monolithic stone so I had to take a little break on the stair Woo! guys this is a good one of those good morning well Kurt left bright and early and he is somewhere up on this giant mountain right behind us I'm thinking this may be one of his crazy adventures craziest adventures yet I'm trying not to stress I have learned the more that I tell him not to do something stay away from an edge don't climb that volcano the more he wants to do it so I support the hike I hope he's taken all the safety precautions that we read about one thing that makes me feel better is that this is a hike where there will be other people on the trail. He's not by himself and I know he's going to challenge himself and have an amazing time and when he gets to top, the top, the views of Rio are going to be worth it. But a little secret between me and you, I will be happy when he gets back to the van and I see him safe and sound. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to do today. It is nothing exciting. We are once again behind on editing. Seems to happen that way often. We procrastinate, we get a video or two uh, behind, and then we have to just stop and edit. So when Kurt does these crazy hikes by himself that I have zero desire to do, uh, I lock down in the van and edit. Another reason that works out really good for me today is the past two days here in Rio have been action-packed tons of walking and to be completely honest with you yes I feel good my heart is doing good everything with my heart failure and all my my problems I overall I feel good but I still can get wore out and get tired and quite honestly two full days like that in a row may have pushed my limits just a little bit so it is likely that I will not even get out of the van today I'm going to do a little bit of relaxing, a little bit of editing, let my body relax from yesterday. We did 11,000 steps the day in that favela, in that neighborhood with all those stairs. The day before we did 10,300 steps. May not sound like a lot to you, but when your heart only pumps at 60% of what it's supposed to, 10,000 steps will kick your butt. So today chilling in the van me and the kitty cats doing some editing probably will have a salad for lunch nothing exciting here but uh let's head back up to Kurt cross your fingers he's being safe just came in under this big giant rock right here and those guys I watched go up the monolith I kind of just started following those for a little bit not long but 
they were in front of me thought they knew where they were going <laughs> we got off in a little bit of a wrong place but now we're kind of backtracking trying to find our way to the to the correct spot this looks like a nice little vista but this is not the trail <laughs> All right, here's the dilemma. These guys went up in front of me and said the trail ended up through here. But if you can see on my map here, it looks like we're right on the trail. So, there is a little trail up here through the boulders. And it's a little complex, but this is definitely, I believe, it. It just got uh, a lot more interesting. Yeah, this is the trail. Appreciate it, though. Definitely some questions here in terms of whether or not this is the trail. It just sort of disappears. And we knew coming in, I knew coming in that there were some challenging, interesting parts that weren't fully disclosed. But there is a cave on the map. If you look over there to my left, there is a cave. And this is slippery scramble up these rocks. Thank you. Wow, that's pretty intense. Yeah. All right, we found a normal trail and we're at about 1600 foot elevation. This is just under a thousand less to go. We're two hours in and we just had a extremely difficult scramble, basically up a rocky river and it was uh, slippery and uh it was interesting and scary for the first time on this trail it's going down and there's been a couple very very short flat spots very short but none that have quite have gone down and this is slippery i can imagine during the rain you ain't your feet are just going you're going on your butt but 
any event I'm pretty worn out um, so you know when you're just walking up a hill you can kind of pace yourself and your breath and all that and you guys probably know I like to push the pace a little bit to try to get in better shape but um, when you go up tricky technical areas like the rocks where they're slippery slippery and you're holding on to chains or ropes or whatever you can grab a hold of and you just got to make it up that little piece you expend a lot of energy and so after those couple bursts we had up those steep spots I'm feeling a little bit spent so pace is definitely slowed down and uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate because we're at the most tricky part of the trail and this is where I really got to be sharp I can't afford to make a mistake so whew. all right drenched in sweat exhausted I got to this rock wall right here and I just had to take the backpack off and take a break this is really the first look out of the tree canopy since I started climbing the trail and this is facing away from Rio de Janeiro you can see some of the tall monoliths just sticking up out of almost seemingly nowhere and if you can look up I told you I had a steep climb left I believe we're going to the top of that thing right there Hey, man, what did I get myself into, guys? What a stunning view over Rio de Janeiro. And you can see up to the left, if you look up there, you can see Christ the Redeemer. And then down below, you see the bay. And you can see Sugarloaf off in the distance. And then I think they call that the Twin Brothers right there, off to our right in front of us. And you can see the Fafala that we visited is right down there in front of us. And if you follow the road down even closer to where we are, there's a golf course down there. But what a stunning view of the coast. But look how steep this is, guys. And they say we get to the top of that. I just don't know if I have the gas left. Wow. We are getting some texts from Kurt. And his first text was like, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake. 20 minutes later, another text basically said, this is not gonna be a piece of cake. It's getting very technical very quickly. And there's been several other texts along the way and it sounds like he's having an epic adventure and really, really pushing his limits uh, on technical skills and on wearing his self out quite honestly his text you can definitely tell he's getting more and more tired so i'm going to try to cook something up i'm going to try to load it up with some pasta at least his half will have a lot of pasta in it get him some carbs to kind of replenish his body when he gets back we thought he would be back around three o'clock it sounded like it might be a little later than that i'm going to go ahead and try to have it ready for when he gets back i'm shooting for four we'll see how my timing goes but let's cook up lunch and I'm gonna go with, I'm just gonna call it like an Italian goulash. It's gonna have some ground beef, some garbanzo beans, some pasta, lots of Italian seasoning, some peppers, onions, tomatoes, lots of spices. Let's see how we do. So if you guys can see here, this is the climb up right there. All right, these guys are climbing with the ropes. You can see right there, and it is a difficult climb. And some people over here are trying without, but that even looks like a difficult climb.
I was up here on this climb and I was wondering what to do and I met these awesome ladies from Atlanta scaling up the mountain. What are your names? Shalape. Shalape? Mecca. Mecca? Didi. Didi? Ashley. Ashley. And they climbed right up that thing. They gave me the inspiration to do it. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, see, going down. Yeah. Nice one, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome. There's a puzzle around every corner, through every door. In every riddle, there must be something
for a crazy climb. And now I'm coming up here. I feel the sun baking my gourd. So I'm breaking through the trees. And I think we might have a view up here. So I'm just sitting here, resting after that rappel. A little guachi showed up. And there he is. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.